Coming up next on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, shipwrecks that are turning into coral reefs. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. In shallow tropical oceans, coral reefs provide habitat and protection for thousands of species of marine animals, especially fish. In places where the seafloor is too sandy to give coral a place to grab on and grow, there is very little fish life because there's very little protection from predators. For years, fishermen have known, however, that a shipwreck out in the middle of a flat, featureless seafloor becomes a magnet for marine life. Not only is it a place for fish to hide from predators, but it's also a place where coral can take hold and grow. For this reason, shipwrecks are often called artificial reefs. Most shipwrecks are the result of accidents or warfare. They've become popular not just with fish, but with divers who want to see the fish or explore the wrecks. Sometimes these shipwrecks are not in the most convenient place for divers, however, far from shore, sometimes in deep water. So why not intentionally sink a ship in a convenient spot? That's exactly what people are doing all around the world, sinking old ships as a way to create an artificial reef in a particular spot, sometimes to help out the fishermen, sometimes to give divers a place to go, and sometimes to help out the local marine life. Yes, it's hard to believe, but sinking a big piece of junk on the bottom of the ocean can be a huge help to local marine life. My question is, how long does it take for a shipwreck to turn into an artificial reef? To answer this question, I'm off to beautiful Key West, Florida, where a relatively new shipwreck awaits. In 2009, a 522-foot-long decommissioned missile-tracking warship called the Vandenberg was sunk off Key West. Before the sinking, it underwent an extensive cleanup at a shipyard in Virginia to remove anything that might be harmful to the marine environment and to make it safer for divers. Then it was towed all the way to Key West. Carefully placed explosive charges flooded the ship and sent her to the bottom in under two minutes. Immediately after the sinking, the ship looked like something from outer space, a completely white, brand new looking ship on the bottom of the ocean. One of the antennae looked ready to be used. Now, four years later, the Blue World Dive Team is heading back down to Key West to visit the Vandenberg and find out what four years on the seafloor have done to the ship. We head over to South Point Divers in Key West, where we load the boat and join a regularly scheduled dive to the Vandenberg. Since this wreck is the second largest artificial reef in the world, it's pretty popular with divers who come from all over the world to see it. 
It's only a few miles offshore to reach the site. Captain Mike drives our dive boat in Key West style. Soon it's time to suit up. Mike gives the dive briefing and then it's time to go. Well, it's been four years since the last time I was here when they sank the Vandenberg. I wonder what four years under the ocean has done to this ship. Let's go find out. It's a windy day and the visibility is not as good as I had hoped, but soon the ship comes into view. No longer is she ghostly white. The Vandenberg is now covered in a thin layer of marine growth. Encrusting sponges, hydroids, tunicates, as well as small patches of coral festoon her hull. Schools of small fish have discovered the ship as well, keeping their distance from me as I move through the passageways. I love to swim up the stairs of a shipwreck. It gives me the feeling of zero gravity to be hovering above such an iconic symbol of our daily human struggle against the forces of gravity on land. Making my way towards one of the masts, I observe a lot of encrusting marine growth. One of the antennae is covered in the same growth. While the reef is growing well, it still looks like a ship. Four years underwater has allowed the ocean to partially reclaim the ship. There's a thin layer of marine growth, and the fish are starting to call the ship home. Soon it's time to head up to the top of the mast where the mooring line is tied. Fighting the current, I make my way to the line that will lead me safely back to the boat. The next day, we head north up the Keys to Key Largo. Key Largo has some world-famous wrecks. We stop in at Horizon Divers, Key Largo wreck diving experts. Tim and I load our gear onto the boat. Soon we're on our way, navigating through the canals to the open ocean on a beautiful Keys day. We arrive at the wreck of the Spiegel Grove. A slightly older wreck, the Spiegel Grove was sunk in 2002. As the crew ties the boat up to one of the mooring lines, I'm getting suited up for my dive. So this is the wreck of the Spiegel Grove. It's 11 years old, a little bit older than the Vandenberg. Let's go see what it looks like.
As I follow the mooring line down through the blue water, the first thing I see is the top of a mast. Looking closer, I can see quite a bit of sponge and coral growth here, as well as fish. Deeper on the wreck, a school of jacks regard me with indifference as I make my way towards the main deck. This 11-year-old wreck definitely shows much more marine growth than the 4-year-old Vandenberg. And there seem to be more fish. The presence of smaller fish has attracted predators like barracuda. Some sections of the wreck are so overgrown with sponges and coral that they're completely unidentifiable. And while I definitely know I'm diving a shipwreck, it's undeniable that nature is taking this man-made object back. There's also no denying that exploring a shipwreck is fun! Since the Spiegel Grove was prepared in advance for divers just like the Vandenberg, it's safe for exploration. Inside a hole in the deck, I find, wait for it, a bathroom. Of course, I explore another set of stairs. I'm rising up to the top of the wreck on my way back to the surface. These ships are so big that they have to be sunk in fairly deep water so they don't stick up and pose a threat to boats on the surface. As a result, the dives tend to be around 100 feet deep, which limits bottom time. I spend a few minutes doing a safety decompression stop on the mooring line just under the surface while I contemplate the wreck. You know, for being only 11 years old, that wreck has a lot of marine growth, it's really pretty. But not a lot of schools of fish. This of course makes me wonder, what would an even older wreck look like? Our captain drives us a few miles to another even older wreck, the Duane. 120 feet beneath this boat is the wreck of the Duane, which is 25 years old. I'm really curious to see what a 25 year old shipwreck looks like. Down on the wreck, I make a beeline for the bridge, known to be one of the most beautiful parts of the Duane. Inside, I discover a refuge for fish completely decorated with sponges and coral. The walls look nothing like the plain metal of 25 years ago. Now they're splashed in yellow, red, orange, and pink pastels. Leaving the bridge, I investigate yet another staircase, still recognizable as such, but so overgrown with sponges and coral that now it looks more like an abstract sculpture. Everywhere I look, the wreck has grown thick colonies of cup corals. and under every overhang, a school of fish hiding from predators. The fish don't know this was once a warship. For them, it's just a great place to live like any other reef. It seems that 25 years old is a good vintage for an artificial reef. All too soon, the dive must come to an end and I head back towards the mooring line to the boat. 
My adventures on shipwrecks have been illuminating. What I've learned is that the Vandenberg has a bright future as an artificial reef as the years go by. I'll be checking in now and then to see how she does as she progresses from a ship to a mature artificial reef.